Well, it's such a nice day. I thought, have a look at the Monday indicator. You know, the one that's flashing pink because it's got a red bulb in it. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. I don't know where it is with me and bulbs. But this Cortina, no bulbs in it at all. The one that was all taped up at the front. And the Mondeo, well, wait you have a look at this. Now, take the front indicator units out. In that hole down there. I don't know if you can see down there. There's a little cross-headed screw, like a Phillips or a Posi drive screw. So what you need to do, this unit here needs to come out. So you need to loosen that screw in there, but don't remove it all the way, just loosen it off. And then this unit just slides out. And then you get something that looks like this. So that's the unit there. That's what it looks like when it comes out. And that's the screw that you loosen, which normally sits, where is it? Normally sits all the way down there. And you just loosen it because when the unit goes back in, it slides in. It slides into the bodywork in there. And then when you tighten that screw up, that's all that holds the indicator in place. Obviously, you've got your normal socket for the bulbs. Now, you might notice red paint around there. This is the bit you're not going to believe. This is unbelievable, this. Look at the state of this. Somebody's actually painted the bulb red. Now, I don't know, that's probably going to be some kind of nail varnish, but I thought they haven't been very good at it because they've painted the entire casing of the bulb as well. But also, I've noticed this wire here, this green and white wire, that's been disconnected by the looks of it it should go back in in there somewhere and it's being cut stripped and cut out now i don't know if that's got anything to do with the fact that the one on the other side of the car over there there's a light that comes on with a um, with the side lights so let me just take this bulb out and we'll see if this is a twin or a single filament well there we are then twin filament that's strange, isn't it? I mean, the fact that it's painted red, it's painted red, but it's got a twin filament on it. Why would an indicator bulb have a twin filament bulb in it? Unless, what we've got in there? That's a twin filament in there as well. That's really strange. This is going to take some investigating before I uh, do anything else with it, because if that wire is meant to be connected, I want to connect that wire back up, but that would mean... When I turn the side lights on, the indicator has come on as a side light, like they do in the Mustang. Right, let's go and do some investigation. Now I've waited until it's dark to film this bit, because this is the only way I could show you what they're like at the minute. But as you can see, the driver's side indicator comes on as a side light, and the passenger side one flashes either pink or purple at night. Well, it's many weeks later, as you can probably tell, no longer have a jacket on, no longer have a jumper on. It's a lovely Gorgeous, fantastic day here again. It's a day hot enough to make Satan himself sigh. It's absolutely fantastic. We need so much more of this. Bring on global warming if it exists. Let's have some fun. But anyway, in the meantime, I did a couple of hours research on the problem with the indicators I have on the front of the Mondeo. Obviously, it shouldn't be pink. And as I suspected, it shouldn't be a double filament bulb or a double filament bulb socket that's in the front indicator housing. So I did a bit of research online and discovered that you can find sockets However, in order to get the sockets, I had to buy another pair of indicator units. But that's not so much of a problem because I can keep these as spares or I can trade them on if I need to. But they come with the all-important socket on the back. The beauty of these is you just twist them to get them out. But they've also got the bulbs in, which is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully those bulbs work. That will save a little bit of time and uh, a small amount of cash. But what I did notice, I'll just show you a bit of a close-up. What I did notice that on the back of the socket, there's a plug. Now, that's, I don't know if you can see now, that's a two-pin plug. Now, the problem with that, obviously this is the way it should be from Ford, but the problem with that on my Mondeo out there is that those incorrect sockets that have been wired in, they've been hardwired in. There's no plug, there's no socket. So the search was on to find a plug, hopefully with a bit of a pigtail. And that's what took the longest length of time. It took ages to find somebody out there that had a Mondeo in a yard that they were busy cutting up. So not only have I got the two-pin plug, I've also got the clip to stop it falling out. Now, they'll go on. Now, you may have noticed in the video clip where I took the indicator unit out of the corner, I took the bulb out, there was a little bit of wire showing, which was orange and black, and then it went into the green wires or whatever. They're going to the wrong socket that's on there. Now, these plugs come with a bit of a pigtail, and on the pigtail, we've got 
an orange and black wire. So all I need to do, in theory, is cut that old socket out that's wrong, bear the ends of the wires, connect orange to orange, black to black. This should plug in to that indicator socket, and I should have the correct colour indicator. Now I'd leave it with a red bulb in because it looks quite funky at night with a purple indicator or a pink indicator. But of course, Mr. MOT man won't, won't like that, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't pass the covers like that. So, what I need to do is just snip the ends of these off, join them, and then connect everything back up. Now I thought I was going to have to be outside, pliers, butt connectors, cable connectors, soldering iron, solder, flux, get everything bed, set fire everything, melt all the wire sheathing and, and burn everything down. However, I did manage to find online, actually saw it on YouTube, you can get these. Now these are supposedly a wonderful invention. But from a company called Solder Seal, you can see all of those in there. And what they are, they come in various sizes. I'll show you one of the bigger ones so the camera will pick it up better. But all they are is a bit of shrink wrap. Now those two blue bits you can see on there, apart from the colour coding, they're actually waterproof sealant as well. And the silver bit in the middle is solder. Now apparently the idea is, you slide this over one of the wires that you need to connect, twist the wires together, and then pull that over the top of where the twisted wire, the bare wire is, and then heat it up with a heat gun, and that melts it, it melts the solder, and it creates a watertight seal that's permanent and should fix everything. It's supposed to be a lot easier than uh, using the old way of doing it with the soldering gun or the butt connectors or the cable connectors, etc., etc. So I bought a box of them, and, uh, well... Let's see how this works, shall we? Now, I did watch a bunch of videos online on YouTube on how to do this. And apparently the way to do it is uh, you use the heat gun. Got to hit the heat gun up to around about 200 degrees, no, hot, no hotter than that. Otherwise, it tends to melt everything and destroy everything. So what I thought I'd do is I, I thought I'd get a bit of scrap wire I just happened to have lying around. And uh, try one on these, let you see that, and see if it works. The strange thing is, when I was watching them online, watching the videos online, all the people that uh, do the videos on these solder seal connectors and use them to connect wires. Once they've connected the wires, they'll then take one side of it in one hand, one side in the other hand, and they'll pull like that until it snaps or breaks and it comes away from itself. Why? What's the point in that? I mean, I'm going to be using them to join two bits of wire together in the front of the car in an area of the car where the wire's never overstretched, it's never pulled, it doesn't move. So, in all fairness, if it breaks under stress, it doesn't matter. I don't know why they're doing that in the videos. Maybe it's just to show the failings of the thing. But they're supposed to be waterproof. Um, they're meant to be good for all kinds of automotive, all kinds of marine, etc. I'm not too sure whether you could use them in household electrics purely because... The amount of um, electricity going through would have been 240 volts. But certainly in, uh, in 12 volt automotive and marine use, absolutely perfect. So let's see how this goes. So I've got the two wires, obviously ready to be twisted together. Got the end piece on, just slides over. So we'll just get these two wires twisted together. And then we slide that over the two wires, making sure that the copper braids are in the middle of the solder and then it should just be a case of heating it up and see how that works. And hopefully you can see that melting there. Well, we're aware. I can see the solder melting, I don't know if you can see that on there. It smells like melting solder. Right, turn that off. That fan will run for a few minutes while that cools down, but looking at that, that solder's melted. Got a couple of blisters on the sheathing of that brown wire, but obviously it is the first time I've used this. A little blister there, but other than that, that looks as though it's okay. So if we take all of that, yeah, it's definitely gone. And it's not coming apart. It's, I mean, in all fairness, it's not going to move more than that when it's in the car. That's with vibrations on the road. Right. The ultimate test, though, 
does it carry current? Now for that, I'm going to need a car battery. And I just happen to have one of those here in the kitchen. Well, of course I do, don't you? So what we need to do first of all is make sure this is going to work. So I've bared the other ends of the wires. So I'll just twist these together for a couple of minutes. Make sure we get a good connection. Obviously I'm just doing this as a, as a test. Because the other end of this wire has a test light on it. So hopefully you can see that there. Now this is the bit of wire. This bit of wire here is the bit obviously that I've just put that solder seal on. So I just connect that one, I touch that one on that terminal, and touch that one on that terminal, the light lights up. So we are getting good current running through the wire that I've joined. So now we know that works. So I think they were really worth getting. As I say, all the videos I've watched online where people have been practicing and using them, they just give them a load of strength on them and pull them after they've made the connection and they just rip apart. But that's not the point. They don't have to rip apart. They're not under any stress. They're not under any movement. It's not like they're attached to a pulley or anything like that. They're just going to sit behind the wing of the car, behind the headlight or the indicator unit. So I think that works really well, as you saw. Nice and easy to do. Yes, I put a little bit too much heat on it by the looks of it, or I held it there for too long, and it's, it's blistered the sheathing a little bit on the cables. But apart from that, I think the next step is definitely going to be get on the car, cut all that uh, wiring that's got the uh, the existing socket on the indicator that's the wrong colour and the wrong size and shouldn't be in there, and do the wiring and use those. Maybe hold the heat on a little bit less or a little bit further away till everything melts, and then we'll get it together, and hopefully... We'll have orange indicators on the front of the Mondeo. So back out at the car, and hopefully you can see this. What they've done when they've added this wrong socket is just twist the wires together and then wrap them in tape. And then not only is that stupid, it also, these could just break apart as they've just done there. And with this one, the way it is, that either of them could cause a short, causing the indicator not to work, or we're still shorting out causing the wires to overheat and cause a fire somewhere. So, absolutely stupid idea to do like that. At the very least, they should have been soldered together when they were joined. But never mind. Let's get on and uh, get the other one cut off. Get those connectors put on. And see if we can get this indicator working properly. Here we go. I've gone with the blue one. Just as a better fit over the wires, so those wires are a little bit thicker. So, let's get the heat gun on. And let's get going. Let me see. It's starting to melt there. and starting to shrink. I think the solder's starting to go. It looks like the shrink wrap's done. Just waiting for that solder to melt now. There we are, starting to go. Now, I don't think you can see that on camera, but you can see the solder mixing in with the wire there. So I think we're there with that one. Now I've got the second one in place. But this is going to be a little bit more difficult because I don't want to burn the first one that I've done. So I've got a glove on and I've got the heat shield in, which I'll hold in place. So hopefully that'll protect a lot of the heat from the heat gun. And let's see if we can get this one done as well. And there's the shrink wrap starting to melt, starting to shrink. Just need the solder to go now. You can see the solder going dull. So it's heating up. Looks like it's starting to melt. There it is. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's melting. It's running around the wire, coating the wire. Yep, I think we're there with that one as well. I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes to cool down. Obviously, the heat gun's cooling down. Let me just trim a little bit of this off so it can fit up to there properly. And we'll plug an indicator in, see if the indicators are working. There we are then. That's both done with the solder seal bits and pieces. And I've also got that neatly. I will put a piece of tape around them to hold them together. So I've got that plugged in, got the orange bulb in. So I'll leave that sitting there. Now, hopefully, when I go and turn the indicator on, that will start flashing. If I've done it the right way and if all the connections are good, we should get that flashing. Absolutely perfect. So now all I've got to do, get a bit of tape around those two to hold them together, push them back in the wing, stick the lens in, and we'll have a proper indicator on the front of the car. Right, well that's both sides done. So I'll get the bonnet down, put the lights on, Let's see how it looks now that it's working the way it should be working. There we are then. Indicator on that side in orange or amber. And also the one on that side, which is just about showing up on camera. So I can get a bit closer. So you can have a 
closer look at that one. There we are, get a bit closer. So I've now got a matching set of amber indicators at the front, orange indicators at the front, or maybe even ginger indicators at the front. The uh, the driver's side one, when you put the headlights on at night, this, that one no longer comes on as a side light. It was the same principle. I didn't bother filming it because it was a straightforward repeat of what was on the other side. There was another twin filament socket that had been wedged in there. So the right socket's in, the right bulb's in, the right wiring's on. I've got to say, those soda seal things, I do like them, and they certainly do seem to work. Would I recommend them? Yeah, more than likely. Certainly if there's not going to be any stress or any pulling on any of the cables, I'd definitely recommend them. Right now though, and when everything's working, I'm going to fire this up, head to the garage, and see if I can get this booked in for an MOT. It's never ending, isn't it? At least I thought I was. Well, I don't know what that was. Seems to be running alright now though. <laughs> Marvellous. If you've enjoyed this video, caress the like button on the way out. If you want to see more, more stuff like this and you find it quite entertaining or even educational, don't forget to hit subscribe if you feel like it. Loads of videos in the back catalogue and obviously the garage is getting so close to being finished now and then we can get on with all the cars and get somewhere further forward with them all. Thanks for watching this one. See you next time. Bye for now.